Hi everyone, so I'm now back home here in Metro Manila and if you've been following me here on YouTube, I actually posted on my community tab a month ago and I said there that I was going to be taking a break from posting here on YouTube because I was going to be traveling with my partner. So it was actually our anniversary trip and it was in celebration of our 17th year together. So um, ever since we got together, we said to ourselves that like, you know we should explore the world together and that's just what we do every single year. So um sometimes if we had a very good year and we've saved enough money we travel to europe or the united states and if um there's some years that it hasn't been that good we travel around southeast asia or just here in the philippines in general and um i was actually gone for a month we were gone for a month and the reason why we're out for such a long time is because um you know for us Filipinos, when we travel, we have to get a visa to go anywhere. So there's only a very limited number of countries where we can go to visa-free. And that's usually around Southeast Asia only. So um, if we do decide to travel out, like to Europe or the States, we actually stay for as long as we can, for like, you know, as long as our visa allows it. And um, I think that's just like the way we like you know like to travel because when we have a much more longer time in a specific area we don't need to rush through everything and we try to live like you know like locals we don't try to do everything like in touristic stuff like there are some days we're just like you know, lying in bed watching um, like you know the scene from our window and there are some days we do touristic stuff and that has how we have always traveled and i don't think that will ever change and so yeah so for our video today it's going to be a travel haul video because i have some stuff that i bought when I was in Spain and France and I would just like to share that with you guys and this video is just going to help me get back into the rhythm of like you know um, shooting videos for us so um, also one other thing I'm going to be inserting maybe some anecdotes and stories about our travel um, into this video maybe randomly I haven't really planned this because I have just arrived like you know uh, three days ago and I apologize if I look like this I'm having a little bit of jet lag my mind is not working properly yet but um, I just decided to do it today because the Sun is shining nicely although I do have some artificial light on because it's, um, it was a little bit cloudy when I arrived here in the Philippines three days ago it was actually raining so I'm just glad that um, the Sun is out and it's giving us this very nice lighting all throughout here in my office but anywho enough about that that was a very long intro so um, I'm just gonna start chronologically from like you know where I started with our trip and then I'm gonna end up in Paris because we flew into Barcelona and then we gradually worked our way up to Paris via Marseille and Provence so um, I have some stuff here it's not a lot but there are some things here that I actually plan to buy and there are some things that I just decided to pick up on a whim so the first leg of our European trip actually was in Barcelona we were only there for three days now we didn't do anything much and we just used this opportunity to actually like you know adjust to European time and get into the vibe of actually being on vacation now after we We've like you know adjusted uh, we actually went to the town of Sitges which is located 30 minutes away by train from Barcelona 30 minutes or 45 I'm not too sure about the time but uh, you know what I mean so it's a coastal town and the reason why we went there is because uh, we were meeting Cholo's friends there and we stayed there for eight days so um, um, like I said it's a coastal town so I just found it a little bit too cold because when we got to Barcelona um, it was raining so when we went to sit just it also rained um, a few days and there's some days that it was very cloudy while well, there were some days that it was just very bright and sunny that I was actually able to go and do some sunbathing so that's why I have a little bit of some color in me today but um, I didn't swim in the water because I just found the water to be a little bit too cold I tried um, putting my toes into the water and I said to myself oh, no I can't do this it's just way too cold especially for the season so anywho the first thing that I got in sit just is from the store called Calcat Elvira, so it's like a retailer there. And I actually got myself a new pair of Avarkas. So I have talked about these Avarkas before, um, especially when I came from, was it last year? Yeah, yeah, I went, to, I came from um, Spain as well last year for, because I attended a very good friend's birthday celebration and I got myself um, a pair of Avarkas. Let me just show you guys that. So this was the pair that I bought last year, and this is actually the 
uh, design of the Avarka that I actually like because the uh, the covering here for my feet is actually uh, quite wide. Now this is from the brand Castell and this is actually my favorite brand for Avarkas. Now Avarkas by the way is the traditional form of sandals in the island of Minorca which is located like you know off the coast of Spain. So I really love this and every time I go to either Barcelona or Minorca or Mallorca I always um, hunt these down but um, when I went to suggest the brand I couldn't find the brand Castel but instead I saw um, this different kind of a design of a Varka and this is from the brand Ria now um, as you guys can see here this is handmade in Spain so everything like even the sandals that I showed you from Castel were handmade so that's why I'm like very very attracted to this and this is a very different design wherein it's a slip on without like a strap at the back to hold into the heel so uh, when when I saw this I was like a uh, little bit on the shelf from purchasing it because um, I have an Abarca from Ria before let me just go get it and this was the design from Ria so as you guys can see if I'm just going to put this side by side with the Abarca from Castel um, the portion here of the sandal the design here is very very different where in the Ria Abarca actually narrows down and I don't really wear this much because um, this portion here actually like you know hits on my toes and they actually break my toenails and um, I have very soft nails so um, that's very that's actually quite unfortunate the only time I wear this is, is if I know I won't be walking a lot but I do love the color though it's very nice and very neutral and it works well with my skin tone as well so um, anyway so when I saw these at the display window of Calca Tilbira I said to myself "Ooh, it's from Ria and I wonder if it's going to be comfortable because you know I'm basing this off of my previous experience with the beige um, Abarca that I bought from them and when I tried it um, it was actually very comfortable and the design here is actually not as narrow as my beige Avarka. So um, it was actually very nice to wear. Especially that the base here of the sandal is also very soft. It's quite thick and it also offered a very nice like, you know, arch support for me. So I walked around um, in the store wearing this and this the, the portion here of the sandal and here were not was not biting into my feet. So I said like, ah, oh, this is actually actually quite nice and it's very comfortable and again it's very very soft so I said like okay I should have it and I also love the color it's very neutral it's very gray so I can just use it very casually um, if ever I need to and um, I do have to say though that you can see that there's already some staining going on which I don't mind because it just gives the sandals character so this is my Avarca from the brand Ria so if you do find yourself in Spain and whether you're in Barcelona Mallorca Menorca or maybe even in Ibiza um, get yourself a pair of Abarca sandals because they're going to be a very nice reminder of your trip there. And um, frankly, everybody in Menorca, when I went there um, in 2018, I think, everybody was wearing this. Like, you know, it was uh, very nice to see. And truthfully, it's actually much more better than wearing uh, like, you know, rubber slippers. It also looks very chic on their feet. And uh, by the way, there are very there are various designs um, available, and there are designs made for men, and there are also designs made for women. Now, the other thing that I got in Sitges is actually this beach towel. So isn't it pretty? So it's beige with this very nice thin white stripe, and if we flip it to the other side, it come it has a different design, and it's actually also more white. Now, the reason why I decided to get this. Um, it's because I actually do not plan to use this as a beach towel, but I actually plan to use this as like, you know, a scarf of sorts, a very big scarf that will just like, you know, keep me warm when needed. And the reason why, like, you know, I was very particular with this. And the reason why I wanted to get one like this is because when I went to Japan early this year with my friend Neil and Mikey, um, I actually brought my with me a towel very similar to this but the design is very different wherein um, the stripes are actually thicker in beige and white and I actually lost that and I was so like you know very sad when I realized that I lost it because I really loved it I really loved it um, I said to myself that if I find myself in situs again I'm gonna hunt that um, 
beach towel down. Now, unfortunately, that beach towel is no longer available. Uh, there are similar designs wherein it, wherein I can see like you know stripes that are much more thicker, but the quality is very different. But this one is very good quality. It's actually very very soft, and it actually feels quite luxurious. So I'm actually glad that I got this, and this is a nice replacement. Um, for that um, towel that I actually lost in Japan and I think it's a much more better quality too what do you guys think now the next leg of our trip actually brought us to Marseille in France and this is where I bought the soap now before I talk about these um, let me just tell you a little bit of a story about um, that leg of our trip because um, Cholo and I were actually going to take the train from Barcelona all the way to Marseille so that trip would have taken around maybe six hours and 45 or close to seven hours I think but um, unfortunately um, two days before our scheduled train um, ride I received an email from um, the train company saying that our tickets were cancelled because there was a strike going on um, during the Spain leg of our trip, so I was like bummed out because this is like two days before our scheduled train ride and I was like, oh, it's too close and if we choose to fly, I know this is going to be very expensive because that's always the case when you book a ticket like, you know, a day or two before your intended flight, then the connections are not going to be very, very good. So what Chola and I decided to do is just we decided to take the bus. So the ever reliable Flix bus in Europe. So we took that and it was a seven an hour journey from Barcelona all the way to Marseille and uh, we passed through the coastline of Spain you know also through the highways of like you know Spain and as soon as we crossed the border into France and then I mean it was a it was not a bad trip at all it wasn't as bad as I thought that it was going to be and also it was relatively cheaper especially like you know there are two of us traveling and uh, it was very comfortable on the seat the seats were wide it was just it was just right not bad at all I have nothing to complain about I am just so glad that Chola and I managed to um, like you know uh, bring our peaches across the border just as scheduled because like you know our Airbnbs were already down and paid for so anywho so we were in Marseille and we were only there for uh, like two nights and that means we were only there for one day so as like, you know, we were walking around town I saw these soaps on display and I decided to get some and I love soaps especially different scented ones and Marseille is also known for soap making so that's why I decided to get them and I bought it from the shop called La Savonnière Marseillaise I hope I said that right and I'm not butchering the name but um, this is the store and um, you see them all over my Marseille so I bought mine um, at the branch near the harbor but you see them like you know in the center of town and in some parts of Marseille as well so I have four bars of soap here and the first bar that I'm going to show you is called uh, Mugue so there the name is actually um, embossed here at the back of the soap and in English, this is called Lily of the Valley. And it smells very fresh, floral, but not overly so. The scent is not overpowering. It smells very delicate. That's how I can put it. It smells so good. Oh, so beautiful. Now, the next soap that I have here is called Vervien. So this is Verbena. And this one smells very citrusy, but not as citrusy as an orange or like as a lime, but mm, I think you guys know what I mean. And I love the color of this soap. It's a very nice, like, you know, delicate green. Oh, it smells so good. So again, it also smells very, very fresh. Now, the next soap that I have here in, like, you know, this brown soap is vanilla. So, of course, this is vanilla. And it smells quite good. Now, um, this vanilla soap was actually on top of the um, verbena soap and the two scents mixing here at the bottom is actually creating a very nice bespoke like you know a vanilla -y, citrony scent and I actually do love it mmm so nice so nice so this is vanilla and the last soap that I have here this black soap is called cedar or cedar in English and this one it has a it smells a little bit citrusy to me as well because I think that's also the you know one of the notes of the cedar tree and it to me it 
smells very masculine, but not overly musky, not overly citrusy as well, but very nice and delicate and well balanced as well. Now, I actually lined these soaps um, in my luggage, and the nice thing about that is my luggage actually smells so good because the scent of the soap just really seeped in into all my clothes and it just keeps everything smelling very very fresh so um that's one thing that i love about buying soap because not only are they a good reminder of your trip to wherever you are but they just also serve as a very nice deodorizer for your luggage so from Marseille, we went onwards to Provence it was just very close to Marseille uh, we took the local train and it was like a 30 minute ride I think or 45 but truthfully I was actually like you know limiting the things that I was purchasing ever since we arrived in Barcelona um, mainly because like you know we were we were traveling from one part of Europe to another and from one country to another and I didn't want to be carrying a very heavy load of luggage with me so um, and truthfully when I travel I don't bring a lot of clothes because I know I can do the laundry which I love to do by the way so I was only like you know carrying around maybe a maximum of 16 kilograms of clothes and shoes and toiletries in my luggage which was actually a good plan because I knew by the end of our trip especially when we get to Paris I'm going to be buying more makeup stuff and that's just going to add more weight into my luggage but at least when I am in Paris um, that's the last leg of our trip and I didn't have to worry about carrying like you know, a very heavy load of luggage with me wherever I go so anyway back to Provence so um, what I brought in Provence is actually this Panama hat so it's actually very nice and very cute and I love the color of the piping here if that's the right term that you're going to use for this cloth here and I bought this for I think 58 euros it's a little bit expensive and the reason why I decided to buy a new one well actually a hat was on the list of the things that I need to purchase I actually had a straw hat that I bought in Spain back in 2018 and I use that a lot um, like, you know when I travel or, or when I am here in the Philippines because like you know I don't have any head of hair anymore so I need something to protect my head so um that hat that i bought in spain that straw hat i actually brought it to morocco last year when we were traveling with my partner again for our anniversary and what happened was it's because the heat in morocco was very extreme and very dry it made that hat very brittle so let me just go get it so that i can show it to you guys so this is how that hat looks like now so as you guys can see um, the weaving here has collapsed because um, like you know I there's one day that I actually held it this way and it just like you know like you know broke because it just crunched um, basing off of the heat from Morocco and there are some parts also here wherein it's the weave is already like you know um, getting untangled although it looks very nice and very uh, well loved um, just to me I don't think I could wear this anymore especially if I want to go to town or something I could wear this in my house in the province near the beach I mean this look would be perfect to use there so this is where my hat is going actually so um, I'm I was actually so glad that I was able to find this in Provence because um, when we were going around Barcelona and in Sitges I couldn't find a hat now uh, the Panama hat, although it is named as a Panama hat, it's actually Ecuadorian. So this is actually made in Ecuador, as you guys can see the flag of Ecuador here. So this is authentic. Now a little bit of history, when um, somebody says she's wearing a Panama hat, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's from Panama. But basing on history, uh, Panama hats were actually originally made in um, Ecuador during the time when the Panama Canal was made. And when there were like, you know, some Americans who were coming in to work in the canal or like, you know, doing touristy stuff, um, they would buy these hats. And when they go back to the United States, um, people were like, oh, your hat is nice. So where did you get it? And then the person who was actually wearing one would just say, I got it in Panama. And that's how the Panama hat got its name, even if it's actually made in Ecuador. So there's a little bit of trivia for you guys today, okay? So uh, one other thing, if you do decide to get yourself a Panama hat, um, the seller in the store actually 
um, taught me how to keep it in good condition. And he told me, like, since you live in the Philippines, it's very hot and humid there, your Panama hat is going to be okay and will last a long time. But if you live in a country like France or like you know, Spain or somewhere in Europe where in the air is quite dry, um, you actually need to put the Panama hat every so often in the bathroom when you are showering because the steam will just keep the Panama hat in good condition and it will just keep it from breaking. So that's one good tip that he shared with me that I should share with you guys so that um, the Panama hat that you might purchase in the future or if you do have one can maintain its quality and shape. So that's very important. And again, like you know, it just helps us to save money because these things are quite expensive. The other Panama hat I was looking at was around a hundred and eighty five euros and I was like ah oh, that's too expensive and that's totally out of my budget so anyways I'm so glad that I got this and I have a new replacement that I could use wherever I go here in the Philippines especially in a very hot sunny day so from Provence my partner and I actually made our way to Paris and we actually took the train which was around like you know three hours or a little bit over and another funny story about this train ride is that I don't know what's up with train rides <laughs> in this trip but um, when we were boarding the train to Paris I actually boarded on the wrong carriage so I totally accept it as my fault and I think um, because I'm dyslexic and sometimes like you know I see white flashes and maybe at the time when I was looking at the carriage number instead of reading 17 I read 7 so we went inside and we sat down and into like the proper seat number so when we were already like you know traveling along and we stopped at another stop to pick up more passengers a guy came in and said yo you are sitting on my seat I was like no 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 this is my right seat number look 704 703 and then the guy goes like yeah I'm also on seat 704 but on carriage number 17 and he showed on my ticket that I'm supposed to be on carriage number 7 so that's when I realized oh my god we are in the wrong carriage and the thing is like you know these trains they get very full especially when they're on their way to Paris and it was going to be a very long train ride so um, what happened was on the next stop um, we actually had to go down in the platform of Avignon and we actually had to run 10 carriages down to our proper carriage where we sat <laughs> for the remainder of the journeys. So yeah, I don't know what's up with our train rides, but so far um, all of our train rides for this trip of ours um, was actually very, very interesting. Now the last leg of our trip was actually in Paris and I haven't been back in Paris in 14 years and the main reason why is because the first time I was there in 2010 or was it 2009? Yeah, in 2009, um, I had a mild case of Paris syndrome wherein I didn't enjoy myself when I was in Paris and um, like you know the Paris in my head was not the Paris that I was seeing. I was always very apprehensive so every time like you know a trip to Europe comes up and Cholo would say oh let's go to Paris I would always say no so can you imagine I've been saying no to Paris for 14 years so I'm actually glad that I decided to say yes this time because it was a very pleasant experience and I enjoyed myself immensely so um, that's one thing I was so glad about and aside from the fact that I bought a lot of my makeup stuff um, there in Paris, I also had a wonderful experience with like you know my good friend Mikey who came from London to see me and we had a wonderful time like you know just going around. We went and had breakfast in Cafe Marley by the Louvre. We also went to Opera Garnier and we also spent the weekend together. We went to a very nice like you know town called Soignol in Brie and we went through old medieval towns and we just had a very lovely time together and also uh, what else did I do? I also went to the La Galerie Dior so that was very interesting. So I really got a lot of my fashion fix um, I went to the Museum of um, Azadine Alaya and I also went to the Museum of Yves Saint Laurent and I was also very glad about that because when I was googling for that museum on my last week in Paris um, I realized that it was closed because they were going to be having a new exhibit on and I was just so glad that on like in my last full day in Paris was actually the first day of their opening so I got my tickets online and I went to uh, the YSL Museum and I just spent a very like you know 
long amount of time there just going through everything now I do have um, like you know a walk with me video of my experience at La Galerie Dior and at the Musée Yves Saint Laurent so I'm gonna put a link down in those in the description box so you can go and check it out if you're someone who's into fashion and if you just want to see it because like you know if it's gonna be worth your time and your money and your effort when you go to Paris um, especially if you are not a huge fan of fashion but you just want to uh, like you know um, seep in all of this like you know no very nice um design some of these fabulous designers and also get a glimpse into their life and into their work so i found those very interesting by the way especially like you know um you see snippets of um their um atelier so that was actually very very interesting so um yeah so um anyway so if you want to see more of my adventures in um, barcelona and in um france um my instagram handle is down in the description box as well so you can go there and you can check out a lot of the pictures and some snippets and videos that i posted on my trip because if i talk about each and every single experience on this vlog it's just going to be too long because i really did a lot i even went to um Cezanne's studio in Provence so I this is way too much information to put in one video so anyway let's me zoom through all of the makeup stuff that I bought when I was in Paris so the first paper bag that I'm going to go through is from Lancôme so I did go through the Lancôme uh, Paris Chic store which is located in Champs-Élysées which is actually very close to where I was staying in Paris and I actually only bought two stuff so of course i did buy the um lash idol because i can't seem to remember if there's a lancome kiosk here in the philippines and i have been actually wanting to get a lash idol for a very long time mainly because of the shape of the um, mascara head here of the wand so let me just open it let me just show you guys a look at the shape of that wand you can really get into the lash and get really like you know into the inner corners with this and um i like you know i'm just so glad that i finally have this and i can't wait to use it in one of our future videos sometime soon now the other thing that i got from lancome is this um art liner so it's an eyeliner and um the main reason why i decided to get this is because the eyeliner that i wanted to get was the grandiose eyeliner but that was that is now um, out of production so I just decided to get this and I actually don't have any liquid eyeliners in my makeup kit at the moment and I cannot actually wait to try this so that's that by the way I did all my makeup shopping in one day because um, I only had one day free to myself and I decided to do that so um, after I went to Lancome I actually went to sephora and this is where i got a bulk of all the things that i actually needed for work so just very briefly and very quickly let me just show you guys what i got so i got the le beige um healthy bronzing cream from chanel and this is in the number 390 let me just um, show you guys this so it's a very nice you know bronzy color and i think this is one of the lightest because the other um healthy girl bronzer that they have is 395 and that one was quite deep so i'm so glad that i decided to get this i have been wanting to try this bronzer for a very long time and they don't actually sell this here in the philippines now i also got this um sa lauder double wear and this is in the color 3w2 so i think you guys can see it here on the um bottle even if it's rusted that it's a deeper uh, foundation shade and i have actually been hunting this foundation color down for a very long time and again they don't carry it here in the philippines because it's just way too deep and i don't understand why they don't um carry it here because um i actually like to use this color for men um because especially those who have a fresh tan on that color works very well i think that foundation will work for me um if i have a much more deeper tan than i do have now because if i just put it here on my side it's just way too dark but i would like to try this out though and um maybe i'm gonna do a uh, trying out new makeup video for the aesthetic with all of the makeup stuff that I bought recently. All right, so let me get these boxes here. And I have some stuff from Givenchy. So I actually got three of the Prison Libre um, setting powder and I got them in the 
shades number three, four, and five. So let me just remove them from the box. So the first Prism Libre powder that I have here is the number three powder, and this is how the color looks like. And this is called uh, Voix Rose. So um, I decided to get it because um, you know it has a tint and it's not very light. And as you guys can see here from the shade, it has a very rosy undertone, which can work with like, you know, very light skin tones with rose undertones. So um, that's the reason why I decided to get that. So the next Prism Libre powder that I have here is in number four. And this is called, what's the name of this? Mousseline Acidule. Oh my god, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, but this is number four. And I think this is good for medium skin tones. Like maybe skin tones like mine are a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper, but I do have to say that um, I can always mix these um, colors together with like, you know, other shades of the Prism Libre. And the last Prism Libre powder that I have is in the shade number five. And this is the color that you see here. And this is named Popeline Mimosa. So um, let me just remove the cap here so you can see it. So this is good for deeper skin tones, but I don't think this is like good for very, very deep skin tones. I don't know yet how it's going to register if I mix all of this together. So I did get the smaller size Prism Libre powders. Uh, and the main reason why is because I wanted to try them out first. Because um, like, you know, I don't want to have a very big... Um, packaging of powder with me especially that I don't have space in my makeup kit so these small sizes actually fit perfectly and they're actually a perfect way to get to know these Prism Libre powders from Givenchy. Now still with Givenchy I have two Prism Libre blushes with me. So this is blush number two and this is called Taffetas Rose. Rose or Rose? So yeah Taffeta Rose. So it's a very nice pinky tone blush I love loose blushes because I feel that I have more, like, you know, control of the intensity and the, like, you know, depth of the color that I would like to apply basing on how much I would pick up. And look at that. It has a very nice, like, you know, hints of, like, you know, rosy-hued colors. Let me shift to the other side here. Look at that very pretty so um the main reason why there's actually another blush here which is lighter a lighter pink blush but i decided not to get that because i already have a light pink powder brush with me which is actually from the japanese brand uh, mitsuyoshi and it was their tonoko powder so i think I'm, i i don't know if you follow me here so but if you do you might have seen me use that uh, blush powder um every so often now the other prison libre brush that i have is the color number three and let me just remove it from the box here and this is actually called voile voile v-o-i-l-e coral so it's a coral color so it's an orangey blush color it's a very warm blush color and i think this will work with people who have like you know medium skin tones with yellow undertones this will just really really pop and if you are someone who has a very fair skin tone this will really pop on your cheeks and give you a very nice flush so that actually looks very nice and very pretty so um they're the same size as the prism libre powders so again i love that because um you know they will fit perfectly into my makeup kit all right so let me dig in some more so i have here three artist pencils from makeup forever and the first pencil that I'm going to show you guys is called uh, Full Red. So this is a very nice bright red artist pencil color. And the next color that I have here is called Free Burgundy. So look at that. It's a very nice, it's a berry tone color. Very beautiful. And the other color that I have here is called um, Boundless Berry. So this one has a much more mauvey tone. Just basing it off of the cap here. So um, I'm so glad that I was able to get these because I have been like you know I, I actually like these um, artist pencils from Makeup Forever they're very creamy and they're very easy to use and very easy to apply on the you know eyes or lips so I'm so glad that I got more of these now finally from Sephora this is the Hydro Grip Primer from Milk now this one I actually just saw this um, on display as I was um, 
about to go to the counter to pay for all of my stuff now. Um, I think people have been talking about this on socials and even here on YouTube. So I was just curious about it and I'm so glad that I got the small size for this because um, again, if I don't like anything and if I got the full size, um, it might just be a waste of product and also money. So yeah, so those are the things that I got from Sephora and I'm actually quite excited to try them out and i'm sure i'm going to be creating a you know let's try a new makeup kind of a video thing for us um in the next few days so anyway after my adventures in sephora in champs Elysees, by the way oh um i didn't have a video or a picture of me going through sephora in champs Elysees, mainly because um they were actually renovating their main like you know flagship store in champs Elysees. so they actually moved into a maybe a smaller store uh, right beside the Guerlain store in champs Elysees. So it was very, very crowded. It was very, very humid and it was very, very hot. So that's the main reason why I didn't have any, like, you know, walk with me videos or I just didn't have me snippets of, like, you know, walking around and getting, like, you know, makeup stuff um, because um, I got embarrassed, basically. But um, anyway, so after my adventures in Sephora, I actually hopped on the metro and I went to the, I could say, well, the lady at Makeup Forever said that this was the historic store of Makeup Forever because maybe it was the first store um, of the brand and when I got there I actually bought like the artist palette so we have here 12 colors of cream products so um, I have actually been wanting to get this for a very long time it was freaking expensive this one was 98 euros and I was like uh, okay I decided to bite the bullet because I need it anyway for myself so I can actually wait to try this out like you know um, I can actually like you know use this if I just want to either adjust some of my cream foundations that I have in my kit or if I just want to play around with colors to create my own custom color um, that I need at a specific point in time whenever I am working because with all of these colors that you see here you can create foundation you can create blush you can create eyeshadow you can create your own custom color for lips eyes cheeks whatever so I am just so glad that I was finally able to get this all right I believe those are some of my makeup related purchase and ah uh, one thing by the way um guys this soap from Petite Marseillaise is actually so good. It's very nice on the hands. It actually smells amazing. It smells like baby powder, of course. Um, there's some hint of olive there because this has like you know olive oil in it. And it smells so amazing. In numerous times that I have been to a restaurant or somebody's home in France, every time I go to the toilet to wash my hands, I would always see this so um, of course you can this is like you know the refillable packaging but they actually come in like you know their own pump bottles and um, I was initially planning of just buying one pump bottle and I actually didn't knew that they had these refillable packagings available so when I went to carry four and as soon as I pick up the bottle and I saw this right below it I said ah I might as well get this because at least it's not bulky and as soon as I get home I can transfer this into a ton of my empty bottles that I have here in my home so I already have one here that I transferred and again it's so amazing and it, it's again a very nice reminder of my trip to Paris so um, if you're like me who loves scents who loves soaps um, get this this is so good you won't um, um, regret it so I actually bought four um, refillable packaging with me and one is already um, in this um, empty bottles now my trip to Paris will not be complete if I didn't go to the French pharmacy we all know how amazing products are at the French pharmacy but I did actually didn't buy a lot of stuff from there because there are some brands there that are also readily available here in the Philippines like Aven and La Roche-Posay and also Bioderma so I said to myself ah okay uh, I might as well like you know try to see if I can find uh, a brand that's not available in the Philippines and that's what I'm going to try and check out. I did find a lot of these products from the brand La Rose. So as you guys can see here, so I have two lip balms from them. 
a hand cream, and a solid sunscreen. Now, what brought me to the French drugstore was the fact that I actually ran out of lip balm. So basically it. So I needed something to um, like, you know, hydrate my lips. And that's where I found this lip balm. One is from La Rose and one is from Aven. So I initially picked up this Aven first. And the great thing with this Aven is that it is actually sold in two. So one I gave to my partner. Why he actually got it from me because he actually loved it and when his lips was dry one time he goes like my lips are very dry do you have a lip balm here so i actually told him to try this aven lip balm and he liked it and he never returned the um, lip balm to me now, i didn't open this yet because um i decided to try the la rose lip balm and this one is actually quite nice it's very hydrating on the lips and it is very easy to apply because you know there are some lip balms in the market wherein as soon as you apply it, it takes a while for it to break through the film barrier of the lip balm and sometimes it hurts like you know when you drag the product in your lips especially when your lips are dry um, it just like you know it just pulls on your on the skin of your lip so this one was actually very good it has shea butter on it as well i think yeah so it has organic shea butter so that's why it's very very nourishing and shea butter is actually one of like you know my favorite ingredients in skincare not only for lips now aside from this clear lip balm they also have a tinted lip balm so look at that it's so pretty i love the color that's what attracted me to this because i didn't think that they had a different kind of a lip balm available so it actually has this very nice like you know rosy color here and i haven't tried this on the lips yet so let's see the color it would in heart on our lips hmm. so the color is not super pigmented but it has a very nice rosy tint on the lips which is actually very pretty so i love it it feels the same as this so i think the main difference is actually the tint so if you're someone who wants to have like you know a tint in your lip balm this is a good idea and if you're someone who doesn't this one is a good idea now by the way these lip balms are actually refillable so i found that to be very amazing so they sell it individually like this and at first i didn't like you know because i don't speak french i couldn't understand um what was um you know written on the description so i just like you know put two and two together because why is this small box right beside this and that's when i realized oh it's refillable so that's actually great because this one sold for like seven euros i think so when you run out of lip balm all you have to do is to buy the refillable and then you just remove the old lip balm here and then you just pop in the new one and actually that's great and again i love the packaging i love the colors of this lip balms now the other thing that i bought in um the drugstore is also again from la rose and this is their um, hand cream now i really needed a hand cream at the time because the air in europe is just so dry and my cuticles were just like you know dying and what i loved about this hand cream is that it's non-greasy it's not oily at all and it just dries very nicely on my hands and it feels actually very nourishing now it's a little bit expensive but it's not so bad at all because um it actually did its purpose now um i bought this towards the tail end of my trip and i actually tried like i also brought this on the plane with me because you know the air on the airplane is very dry and you just need something to like you know hydrate your fingers and to keep your cuticles in good condition anyway i bought this towards the tail end of my trip to europe and the reason being is because um i ran out of argan oil so i have been using argan oil on my body and on my hands neck like you know all over uh throughout the entire trip and that was actually what nourished my skin so i'm not going to be talking about the like you know skincare stuff that i brought with me to Barcelona and Paris because it's the same skincare that I brought with me to my trip to Japan. So if you're interested to know about all the skincare products that I brought with me, like even like my toiletries, I'm going to put a link down to that come pack with me video to um, Japan because um, everything that I brought to Japan was also the same things that I brought with me to my trip to Europe. And finally, I also bought this um, SPF stick. So I just bought this because I was very curious about like, you know, um, sunblock in solid form and like, you know, I'm a little bit, um, 
like you know on the fence with it because like you know of contamination things like that how to keep this clean all the time so anyway so i actually like you know after every use of my solid sunscreen i would actually wipe it down with some tissue just like you know to remove the top layer of like you know whatever is left on the stick so um i have actually been using this for the past few days the first time i used it was on the day that i actually flew out of paris um, because i just wanted to try it out and to see if like you know it was good to use now i did talk about this very briefly in my trip report because i did uh, do a trip report um coming back to the philippines on my flight on etihad airways and um i am not really very happy with the finish of this sunscreen because let me just show you guys so although i do love how easy it is to apply on the face let me just do half of it right now i actually do not like the finish of it that it leaves on my skin look at that so by the way, I am not wearing any um, sunscreen uh, for this video right now because I wanted to show you guys this. Now, if you have very dry skin, you guys might like this because it leaves this very nice shine on the face. But for me, I just found it to be a little bit too greasy and a little bit too oily. Now, although this is SPF 50, I think this is like, you know, good protection, but um, it's just way too greasy for me. And by the way, this has a very very nice like you know vanilla vanilla kind of a scent I don't know if this has like you know a honey scent to it as well so if you have sensitive skin this might be an issue for you but anyways I just find it a little bit too greasy and too oily but I think this is a European kind of a thing because if you use sunscreen like you know and the air is very dry in Europe you want this kind of a look but if I use it here in the Philippines this is not the kind of effect that I want in a sunscreen because my sunscreen let me just go get it so my favorite sunscreen is the VMV Armada Sport 70 so it has an SPF of 70 and this is silicone based so, so you guys can see here and the reason why I love this is because let me just put it right beside that okay so look at that Although you can see the dewiness and the shininess of this VMV Armada Sport 70 sunscreen, it doesn't look as greasy as this La Rose um, Stick sunscreen. And this is the kind of sunscreen look that I like on my face. Well, this one is just way too oily. Um, and I think, like, you know, I think I briefly read that this has a lot of, like, you know, nourishing oils in it. Like, I think it, also, it has, like, you know, apricot oil. And I just can't seem to understand the ingredients here because it's written in French. But I do understand that it has a lot of components of oil in it. And that's the main reason why we get this very, like, you know, you know, oily kind of a look on the face. But, you know, of course, it depends. If you have dry skin, this is going to be perfect for you to use because it just creates, like, you know, an, it becomes, like, an occlusive. It just uh, refrains from all of your moisture from evaporating. But then again, my sunscreen here, my BMV Hypoallergenics um, Arbana Sport 70, is also an occlusive, but it has film-forming capabilities, but it doesn't look greasy. And um, to me, this sunscreen feels lighter on my skin than this one. So this is just a personal preference of mine. You can actually use this to add shine in your, like, you know, decolletage area your shoulders or even your arms but it's just a little bit pricey for um, how many mils of product is this it's only 0.5 fluid ounce of product so this was like around 14 euros and 90 cents i think if i remember the price correctly so um yeah because in comparison like this one you have 185 grams of product and um although this is pricey like you'd pay um i don't know maybe 50 euros for this or 40 euros i'm gonna put the right price um down here below but it will last you longer and you have a much more nicer effect on the skin all right so. and now to finish off this vlog of ours today let me just show you guys these like you know vintage powder compacts that i got at the flea market when i was in paris so i'm gonna start with this compact first so it's a very nice, like, you know, metal compact here with a very nice, like, you know, 
like um, Middle Eastern kind of a design. The lady at the store actually told me that this was from some lady who lived in Egypt. And um, what attracted me to this compact is actually just like the design of it and knowing that you can have a lipstick inside it. So if we just open it, you can see that the screen guard here for the powder is still there. There are still some remnants of the powder in the compact, but there's no more powder puff. But um, what attracted me to this compact at first is actually this lipstick here. Because if we dial it up, there's actually a color inside now. So I decided to buy it. And while I was walking around the flea market, I said to myself, Ooh, I think I might have been duped or like, you know, that's taking it too far but maybe this lipstick here was not the lipstick that originally came with this compact because um, I do remember that the lady who was selling this to me was having trouble putting it back so I said like mm, I, I only thought about it like you know um, like you know minutes after because if this was the lipstick for this compact the lipstick case would have looked like this so this is actually the proper lipstick that comes in a vintage compact look at that so although there's nothing inside this lipstick anymore it has been cleaned out but i think you understand i think you know what i mean when i say that this actually um would actually fit much more better in here if you know what i mean so let's try it together hang on let me open it up again let me remove this and let me put this here so see, it actually fits so much better. So after that realization, um, this compact actually like, you know, left a bad aftertaste <laughs> in me. But anywho, let me talk about this other compact. Now, although it, it said here that it's 30 euros, but I got it for 25 because I think maybe the seller just wanted to let go of it already. Now, what I liked about this vintage compact is that you have the lipstick here which is encased here and then in this part of the compact let me just try to open it up for you guys all right so flip open you can put your cigarettes here or some money back in the day and this is where you actually have um like you know the case for your powder and you still have the screen guard here for the powder and you have the powder puff how cool is that but this compact has been cleaned out and also the other feature that I like with this vintage compact is that there is actually a comb here so you can use it to comb your hair and once you're done you can just actually put it back in place here Ooh, let me try to see if I can return it properly yeah so that's that. So of the two compacts that I bought, this is actually my favorite because this is the first time that I'm seeing a makeup compact where you can actually put a comb inside it. So it adds a much more nicer diversity into my like, you know, small vintage makeup collection here on my table. So um, yeah, so I guess that's it. That's my vlog for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you my travel haul. Um, the things that I got while I was in Spain and France. So if you have any more questions about everything that I got, please leave them down in the comments box and then let's have a conversation about it. Okay. All right. I'm going to let you go now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye.